going on everybody? This is Sean of Royal Select Music and today I thought I'd do a little bit of a different video. This Saturday marks the very first time that I am doing an out-of-town gig. I live in Niigata City, uh, which is about three hours outside of Tokyo, Japan. And this Saturday I'm going to be doing my very first DJ gig in Japan. Shoutouts to RT395. Go into the description. There will be a link to give you more information. And if you are in the Tokyo area or in Japan in general, definitely come and check the event out. Uh, RT395 is a hell of a drum and bass DJ. Sounds like his friend who's also going to be playing drum and bass. He's a hell of a drum and bass DJ. And I'm going to be doing a little bit of a beats, hip hop, funk and soul set. So it's sort of something that I, I, I normally do either through my mixes or my events here or uh, my Raw Select Radio, which also, real quick, to plug one more thing, I just d finished a uh, Raw Select Radio. This is episode number five. Head over to my Mixcloud and you can check that out for yourself. So while hopefully I will be able to get some footage from that event and also a little bit of vlogging, get some vlogging done down in Tokyo, that is not the point of this video. As you can see underneath my arm, I have my record bag all set and ready to go. I've got all my records for this weekend. You can see I got some goodies. I got an old school classic right there. Can't blow Uptown Saturday Night. Gotta love that record. I've got some new shit. I've got some old shit. I've also got my box of 45s ready to go too because I love playing my 45s. Ooh, that guy right there. Real happy about that record. And today I thought I'd do something of a informational video slash uh, vlog and go through, tell you about how I organize my record bag, how I prepare for an event, and maybe hopefully give you an idea of my sort of mindset before uh, I get into an event. So hopefully you find this interesting, and even if you're a digital DJ, if you use DVS, you use uh, CDs, CDJs, controllers, maybe you might get something out of this video. So I am not a digital DJ, I haven't gotten into CDJs, and I just haven't made the upgrade to the uh, digital DJ realm, because it's fucking expensive. So I have to stick with trusty records, which can be, uh, in certain situations, very helpful, but also at the same time, DJing with vinyl can also be a major pain in the ass because you really have to think about what you're going to play ahead of time. And with this DJ set, I am doing a little bit of old school hip hop, some new school shit, some beats, some funk, and some soul. Here, I'll just go through some records real quick. I got this great Dilla uh, anthology, which may or may not be a bootleg. I don't know if that one's officially approved. I got Benny Ford Boys, both albums, great records, great beats if you haven't had that. Uh, another modern classic right there, Adam Anderson Pock, Malibu, really good stuff. Uh, ooh, that 14KT, Now Alaitas, I've been listening to this a lot recently, and this has some absolutely banging beats on it, as well as this guy right here, T. White, The Gift, Volume 5. And I've also got some classics in here, too. I've got Tribe Called Quest, Oh My God, one of my favorite uh, tribe, tribe records. I've got Feral Monch, Simon Says. So, and ooh, while well, I've got my hand on it. I've also got Organized Confusion, Stress. Love that record. So as you can see, I've got kind of a wide variety of tracks. And while most of this is pretty organized, Generally, when I'm putting my record back together, when I first start the process, I'm usually just throwing records into my bag, just trying to get as much music as possible, and then I will start the sorting process. 
from there I'll usually sort my records by BPM, starting going from slowest to fastest. So like for example, this Betty Ford Boys record, the slowest track on here is 76, and the last record in my bag right here is Gangs. Ooh, ooh, this is another Tommy Boy classic right here. Gangsta Bitch, Apache. I absolutely love this record. And that's the fastest record that I have in my bag this time around. So I'll always start from the lowest BPM all the way to the fastest BPM. When I think I have all my records together, that's when I'll seriously start practicing. And for me, practicing means uh, really trying to get my beat matching ear back up to snuff because if you take a long period of time off and aren't really practicing, it's not really a skill that sticks with you. It's something that, at least for me, I have to uh, rebuild it every time that I take a long break off of DJing. So getting my BPM ear back up and really the number one thing that I'm trying to uh, do when I'm practicing is getting my sort of track selection sensibilities back up to snuff as well. Being able to play a record and feel confident in knowing what I have in my record bag and being able to quickly and easily decide what record I want to play next, which is actually why uh, I BPM, I sort my records by BPM, because it's just the easiest way for me to know where a record is in my bag. As a brief little aside, I do want to say, never ever plan your set out ahead of time. You may have a couple of tracks that you know work really, really well together, and I definitely have no shortage of those. Actually, here's a, here's a good one, if I can find it real quick. Where'd you go? Nope. Oh, uh, shit. Ah, there you are. This guy right here, Bloods Hall, is a really, really funky track. I don't even think... It says Original Motion's uh, picture soundtrack. I don't think... But, it has two records in it. I've got the actual record, Bloods Hall, and I usually play Attack of the Killer Penguins on it. But, I keep this guy in it as well which is a hip-hop classic audio 2 top billing because it's a mix that i've pla practiced a million times i essentially treat it like it's an acapella even though it isn't and I, it's always been a crowd pleaser that sort of thing is okay a, planning your entire dj set out ahead of time is an absolutely horrible idea because it offers you no flexibility and it gives you no wiggle room if the crowd doesn't like what you're playing. A friend of mine years ago, we were doing a DJ event together and he had his whole set planned out to a T. He had the transitions planned out. He only had the tracks that he wanted to use for that DJ set in his uh, tractor program. And that's it. He had nothing, he had no contingency songs. And when it came time to do his actual DJ set, it was an absolute disaster. Nobody really liked his track selection. The transitions didn't really work as well as he wanted to. And if he had continued the set all the way through the way that he had originally planned it, it would have been an absolute nightmare. Now, Fortunately, he did actually have uh, a bunch of other songs on his computer uh, that were far more crowd-pleasing than what he had put together in his DJ set. And after being yelled at by the main organizer of the event, he went to those songs and actually managed to salvage his set. But the moral of this story is, if you can take anything away from this video, don't plan your set out ahead of time. Have a couple of mixes maybe ready to go, maybe a couple of songs that you know are sure shots, but never plan out your DJ set. When it comes to selection, the last phase for me is the pruning phase. Really going through the records that I pulled out and deciding, do I really want to bring this? Because it's really easy to get bogged down in tracks that you think you're going to want to play, 
and then inevitably don't actually end up playing. Now, I feel like I've done a pretty good job this time at, at pulling records that I feel like if I play any record from this bag, I can find another record quickly enough to confidently move from one track to another. But in instances in the past, I've pulled a bunch of records that I thought I wanted to play, and I didn't really know those records really well, and it became an absolute nightmare of a DJ set. So really going through and deciding what records are absolutely essential to what you want to say to your audience, I think this is easily the most important phase of uh, getting ready for a DJ event. And then I have to make sure that I grab my essential items, like my butt stood up set of headphones, my needles, which I've got right here. This is actually my backup pair. This is my case for my uh, white labels, which is usually what I use, but I also have a backup pair of needles, which is the Shure M44 7s which are really powerful needles and have great tracking, but they have a tendency to drop out the signal. And then the other essential items that you might want to consider bringing with, especially if you're playing vinyl, is a bit, a can of compressed air. And the reason that you want to bring this out is if you're dealing with a dusty mixer or tur unknown turntables, Bringing this guy with you can be really, really helpful because you can clean out a lot of the connections, whether it's the tone arm, the faders, or anywhere where something needs to be connected. This is really handy to have. And also, if you're playing records, I highly recommend that you either bring a record cloth or a record brush. Those are the items that I usually bring with me. Uh, let me know if I forgot anything. Oh, and actually I did forget something. I always usually try to bring a mix CD with me, and this is one of the last DJ mixes that I've done. So yeah, that's going to be it for me today. Hopefully you got something out of this video. Hopefully you thought, uh, found something interesting about it. Uh, let me know what you thought. Let me know if I forgot anything down in the comments. Definitely go into the description, uh, head over to my WordPress or Steemit blog because that's where I'll be posting. Uh, information about this event on Saturday and anybody watching this video definitely come check me out and check out R2 or RT395 there we go at uh, the Ruby room starting at 6 there's gonna be a little bit of a uh, speech about cryptocurrencies for the first hour and then I'm gonna play and then uh, RT and the other DJ are going to be playing what should be a really good drum and bass set. I'm really looking forward to this. Hopefully I will end up getting over my camera shyness and get some vlog, vlog, uh, vlog footage for you. So you get to see country boy in the big city. That kind of shit should be interesting. Uh, and one more thing, I did finish a new Raw Select Radio recently. So also make sure you head over to Mixcloud or DSound and you can check that out. That's going to be it for me today. Thanks again for watching and hopefully the next time you see me, I will be in Tokyo. Till then, peace!